Play Hi, welcome back to the Eminem Appreciation Series, where I'll be listening to the full discography of Eminem, and each video will be one of the 11 albums. Today, we dive into his second album, The Marshall Matters LP, released in the year 2000. In the timeline of me being born, I was still not born when this album was released. Bear with me though. As I put behind me the Slim Shady LP, I was interested in the second album and what it had to offer to me. To be honest, I love the Slim Shady persona and the sound of the first album. It was new, dark, and obscenely funny. And if you know me, you know I have a thing for music that tends to be controversial and disturbing. <laughs> I didn't think I would have loved this album as much as the first one. First, because the album is called after the real name of Eminem, so naturally I figured we would diverge from the Slim Shady sound, which is the one that I fell in love with initially. Second reason was because the cover of the album is not super convincing. If we look at it, it's gray and gray and a little bit of gray and then Eminem. But boy was I in for a surprise. This album was produced in two months. Mostly written while Eminem was touring from the Slim Shady LP, he was mainly inspired by the critical reception of his first album and his new lifestyle which he had trouble adjusting to. After the massive success of his first album, he had the pressure of writing a better, more sophisticated album, like almost any artist. Luckily, this time he had a bigger production available to make his third studio album a masterpiece. He was angry and had a lot to say regarding his life, as well as the media and their opinion of him. He wanted to push the buttons and scream to the world, F you, I'm here, I'll stay here, and I'm saying whatever I want. This attitude toward his new music was greatly rewarded. The Marshall Matters LP was a huge hit debuting at number one in the Billboard 200. He broke music records of the time within the number of copies sold after the first week of release of the album. It sold 35 million copies worldwide and introduced half the globe to the Sacramento of hip-hop. Eminem earned four Grammy nominations including Album of the Year and two trophies for Best Rap Album and Best Rap Solo Performance. The album was almost called Amsterdam. The reason for this title is because when he was touring for the Slim Shady LP, he was greatly inspired by the city both negatively and positively. Positively because, as a drug user, it had a great appeal to him. As we know, at the time, Amsterdam had really different law when it came to drug use than the United States. Negatively because, when he was in Amsterdam, the press was really harsh on him. And this inspired four songs of this album. Ultimately, he decided on calling the album The Marshall Matters Long Play. He ended up going with this title since this album depicted his own life, experiences, and opinions in a more serious manner and separated from his slim, shady goofiness. In its structure, the album has the same format as the Slim Shady LP. It starts with a public service announcement and includes various skits that help understanding the different themes. As always, describing the album with a few words, I would say it screams black licorice. I'm sure some of you are like, what do you mean by black licorice? To me, black licorice is a mood and a sound, or as the internet would describe it, horrorcore. Sonically, while I listened to the album, it felt like rap, god, and rock had a threesome and somehow conceived an angry baby. Visually, the aesthetic of the album is darker, his videos such as Stan are gloomier and fit the horrorcore team. On tour, he would go on stage dressed as Jason Voorhees, the character from the American franchise Friday the 13th. Compared to the Slim Shady LP, it is way less cartoonish. We really enter an upper level of dark humor. Lyrically, in this album, Slim Shady and Marshall meet. They are one, as opposed to the Slim Shady LP where you could clearly hear the difference between the Slim Shady and Marshall tracks. In contrast with his first album, where Slim Shady was just goofing around and literally not caring, in this one, Marshall is angry. Therefore, he is implicitly saying that he does care about what others say, and now he is addressing it, taking the narrative in his own hands. The skits will not be explained. They're pretty self-explanatory, and God... <laughs> I don't want to explain Ken fucking Kenneth. I got ear raped once and that's enough for me. The album starts with Kill You, which introduces you quite beautifully on how this album will sound as well as the themes of it. He starts a song talking about his childhood as if he was going to use the rapper rough childhood trope or structure. But then, as we listen to the first verse, you understand that he will actually address what the media is saying about him, how he can apparently not talk about his struggle anymore because now he got the success he wanted so much, so for sure his life has to be better and he has no reason to complain. However, Eminem is setting things straight in the rest of the song. He's telling to his critic as he compares them to bitches. Look, 
I will write about whatever I want, and while we are on this subject, I will stay violent. And I think it's hypocritical that the media is constantly bombarded of sex and violence, but now you're blaming me and only me and trying to shut me up, but also trying to use me as, as a way to increase your popularity? I will not stop making my art the way I want, and you don't want to mess with me. I will play this character just to piss you off even more. The song itself depicts a vivid image of rape, murder, and bloody crimes mainly against women, which I think represent the critics. And it ends with... You know I'm just playing, which Eminem think it's funny, cause just that sentence can change the whole way on how you listen to the song. This song really showcases Eminem's talent. He's able to write a masterpiece and paint us a story that can be real. Even if you're not a celebrity, with this song you get immersed to the reality of having a stalker and the, and the power that your words can have. Stan, which is the word fan and stalker put together, represent a crazy obsessed fan. In this particular story, Stan writes letters to Slim Shady because he admires him. As the song advances, the fan starts putting its own life at risk, imitating what Slim Shady lyrics say. Not getting the attention of Eminem, he kills himself and his pregnant girlfriend to be seen by Marshall. Finally, Eminem writes back to Stan and the message that he writes is actually a message for his fandom. He says that they should understand that what he writes is not to be taken word to word, more specifically what he writes in his Slim Shady persona. We can see that Stan always addresses his letters to Slim, not Marshall or Eminem. So clearly Eminem is saying that that persona specifically is not to be looked up as a role model. In the last verse, Marshall shows that he does care about how he affects his fans. Eminem does feel remorse for what he writes and how he can impact the world. On his third track, he reflects to himself what his music as well as his fame mean to him. He didn't know he was going to become so famous or have the influence that he has now achieved. He is new to this and he didn't mean to affect people's life the way it did after he became famous. He continues to press on the fact that he is obviously joking on most of his lyrics. To him, his art is a way to channel his anger, a form of therapy. He also calls out the press, who at the time were blaming him for effing up America with his obscene and disturbing lyric. He says, I'm sorry, there must be a mix-up. You want me to fix up my lyrics while the president get his dick sucked? He is showing evidence that society was effed up even before his song or his popularity became a thing. Yet in his perspective, no one complained about it. The media is still making him a big factor of why quote-unquote America is declining. After the release of his first album, the critics were really hard on him. Quite understandable why he would feel attacked. The Way I Am was his second single release of the album. It's important to listen to the skits that precedes this song called Steve Berman. Prior to the release of his album, most executives of Interscope label were worried that the album would flop because of its content. The Way I Am is the result of the bottle up pressure that he was feeling. Lyrically, he makes reference to his song Rock Bottom of his previous album. The Way I Am is him letting out his frustration on how fame is treating him. He clearly has had a hard time adjusting to his new life. He cannot do normal things anymore because of his fans. He says, in the streets when I'm eating or feeding my daughter, to not come and speak to me, I don't know you and no, I don't own you a mother thing. He can't even use his music as therapy anymore because then all of this controversy circles back to me and it seems like the media immediately points a finger at me. So basically, he is who he is, but that's tiring too. It's hard for him to be in the spotlight because at the end of the day, this is his job, but his job often gets into his private and mental life. It was the first single released, but the last song written. This is the only song that doesn't fit the rest of the album sonically. It's a lighter song that was requested, so at least one song could be more radio friendly. It was the first single released from the album, and I think it sounds this way because it's a good transition between the Slim Shady LP and the Marshall Matters LP. It is a classic Slim Shady song where he pokes fun of other artists and where Slim Shady is at his full dissing potential. This song is a collab with Herbie X, <laughs> X and Sticky Fingers. Sorry for not knowing how to say these names. So the three rappers' lyrics are similar to what Slim Shady usually raps about. At this point, we know how this sounds. Sonically, it is arguably one of the most aggressive songs of the album. The last part of the song is rapped by Eminem and gives off the Slim Shady LP vibes. As the song ends, we hear kids chanting, That's why they Slim Shady is coming back for a few tracks. Q. That's why they call me. The end of Remember Me transitions perfectly with the beginning of I'm Back. It's sort of like a continuation of the previous track. In the previous track, Slim Shady is asking to the public if they remember him because surprise, surprise, now he's back. In this song, it is Slim Shady that takes over. 
he makes multiple references to his last album to remind us that he has a sick and perverted mind. As the song proceeds, we can in fact confirm with the lyrics that Slim Shady is a socio or psychopath, whichever we want. In half of the song, he's talking about what the press had to say about him and owns it. So if they saw him as a monster who brainwashed kids to harm others, then that is who he is. He makes reference to Charles Manson and how himself has shown psychopathic behavior as a young child. Slim Shady is not being funny here. He is gloating and being unapologetically himself. The other half of the song is more of an answer to the music industry, specifically MTV and how they use his whiteness to attract listeners. The rest of the song is Slim Shady being Slim Shady, saying controversial things about people in the industry just to make everyone angry. Sonically, this song is really different from the two previous songs. The whole message of this track is Marshall saying that he's a normal human being just like us and that he is once again annoyed by the press and the negative attention that he gets as well as how he is portrayed by the media. He says, I don't know why all the fuss about me. He wants to be able to use his music to voice his thoughts and have fun, but it seems to him that everyone is out to get him from his own family to the music industry. However, he will defend himself and he will fight back. He starts saying this song is his love song of the album. By the title of this track, you can already figure out that he has quite a relationship when it comes to drugs. Written in 20 minutes, this song is just M talking about substances that he took and looking back to his party nights and reflecting on how the drugs make him feel and how they make him be bolder, but how it also had its negative effects such as not creating real relationship with the woman he encounters as well as like cheating on Kim or the down effects of it. He didn't seem to be struggling to quit. However, he does mention that he should stop, but he's young, so he's enjoying it while he can. On this track, Slim and Bizarre dedicate a song to Detroit, the town where Marshall mainly grew up and where he was influenced to be the person that he is right now. They compare Detroit to Amityville, the infamous town where the horror movie The Amityville Horror takes place, since the reputation of Detroit, according to the lines of these rappers, It is sick and violent like Amityville. Also, as you listen to the album, you notice that Eminem references a lot of serial killers or characters in history who have committed serious crimes, probably because he sees himself as a serial killer in the music industry, killing other artists with his diss tracks. He even warns you to not mess with him because he will kill you. Bitch Please Sue is a part of two of Surprise, surprise, Bitch Please by Snoop Dogg. There is not much to explain for this song. It is a fun collab where Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre, Nate Dogg, Exhibit, and Eminem sing. It's fun, lots of dissing, the collaborators answering to each other. I put it on my workout playlist. This is the first song written of this album. And this is why I'm so concerned for Eminem at the time. I wish this would have been a skit. The psychologist part of me adored this song, but the woman artist in me thinks that some things are best kept private. This track depicts Marshall on his way to kill Kim. Throughout the song, they argue and we can hear in their abusive dialogue how complex of a relationship these two have. One moment you think she is the abuser and the next, he's the one who's abusing her. It's one of the most real and raw songs where as a listener you can really understand what it feels like to be caught up in a dysfunctional relationship. Okay, let's talk about the event. Because I really don't want to talk about the lyrics of this song. You can go listen to it. It's like very crude. She, he's basically just killing Kim and like being desperate. When Marshall was touring for the Anger Manamish tour, which was basically the name of the tour for the Marshall Matters album, he was in Detroit. He was going to perform a few of his songs. Prior to getting on stage, he had promised to Kim's, who at the time was still his wife, that he would not perform the song Kim. But then he proceeds to sing the song and bring out a blown up Kim lookalike doll and have the whole crowd sing the song and humiliate Kim. Later in the evening, Kim attempted to commit suicide, but she failed. Once again, we get another collab. This time is D12, a group form of six rappers in which each one has an alter ego, hence the name D12. One of the six rappers happens to be Eminem and it's thanks to this group that this Slim Shady character was created. D12 was formed before Eminem rose to fame, so after the success of Eminem, they actually released two albums. In this track, each of the six rappers get their solo time where they present themselves and they rap their portion of the lyrics. There's not much to say. It's a really funny song in which Eminem was probably on drugs. As the album finishes, we wrap up the show with the track Criminal. One last time, Eminem highlights the fact that his listeners and critics are stupid if they think that all that he says, he means. 
However, if that's still what they want to believe, he is going to play the part of the criminal, the murderer, the homophobic man in which they are portraying him. On this track, he pokes fun and is clearly provoking the audience, giving them what they are hating him for. He retakes the different themes he talked about in the previous tracks and does a sort of conclusion, which is he will say the criminal that he is, kind of like in the first where he finishes with the song Still Don't Give Up. This album is on repeat in my Spotify playlist. It is sonically more cohesive. I wrote in my note that it feels like if you took some type of substance and as you listen to the album, you get the different stage of being in a high. In some songs, you're angry and hyped. In others, you're sad and scared. In others, you really see reality better. Then you get the bad stripping, but then you come down, but you definitely enjoy the ride. I also love the fact that he slowed down his lyrics for this album because it really gives you a chance to understand better the lyrics, but also you just get more immersive the black licorice aesthetic and it just makes the lyrics fit perfectly with the melody. The fact that he toned down the cartoonish voices elevates the album because you look at it in a more serious way. You understand that this is more serious than the previous album. Eminem explores the dark, mad, and angry part of his slim shady persona. The only major flaw would be that their themes kind of repeat themselves. Like, yes, we understand you don't give up F, and yes, we do see that you have a hard time dealing with fame. However, what resolves this issue is the fact that he is capable of making each track sound new, even if it revolves around the same subjects all the time. Now, as a woman, I do feel like I have to address the major issue that was brought up 21 years ago. This album is deeply misogynic, and I would argue that it is to be taken with a grain of salt, but that's because I know that it's to be taken with a grain of salt. I at the same time, music and artists have an important influence over society and that's where the issue is with this album. That's where the lines get blurred. Like I know as a person because I've done my research and I know Eminem, I'm just more grown up, that he has a complicated relationship with female figures in his life and that as an artist, I know that for him, this is the way to channel his trouble and he does say that he didn't expect to have this level of fame, like he does address it. It is hard for me to determine what is right or wrong in this topic because on one side, it is not his responsibility to shelter his audience from his words because he has the right and this is his way to cope. But I would be lying if I said that he doesn't know the level of influence of and power he achieved as we can hear in who knew or the way i am like he clearly knows that he is famous and that he has influence he also knows his audience because when you're like an artist you have to market your whole image and your whole like person that you are and you usually do it to a certain audience so you have to know your audience so for sure he knew that the people who were listening to him a lot of them were teenagers and as we know teenagers are impressionable but then whose job it is it to shelter them and teach them what is right from wrong when the power and influence is Unbalance. After the release of his first album, the critics were really hard on him and there were even protests to boycott the release of his new album. Quite understandable why he would feel attacked. However, it is quite ironic that the man who preaches to not take everything so personally does the same when it comes to what others say of him. I think the only part that redeemed himself is the fact that he did address the fact that, look people, what I'm writing is not to be taken 100% seriously. I really am looking forward to listening to his next album. Yes, I really enjoy this album a lot. So yes, thank you for listening to me comment down below what you think of this album which track is your favorite if you want to tell me something about Eminem that I don't know or what do you think about this album whatever it is just put it down share subscribe and like it would really help me and I really it means a lot to me every time that one of you sees it I will see you for the next video of the Eminem appreciation series bye